Welcome to In a Laptop with a Tree. No, In a Forest with a Laptop. <laughs> yes. But here's the tree here. I want them to be able to interact, you know, to interface the technology with natural technology. Instead of making these big, hunky, clunky, grey, glass contraptions, we should have had something that can interface with the natural circulation of, whether it be chemicals or, or energy particles or electromagnetic fields, whatever's happening, surging around us all the time. Um, which is not, we have to instead go and, you know, burn things and dig things out of the ground and smack things on each other and... Anyway, I'm in a forest, and at least we can benefit as human beings from nature by being inspired by it and coming back to a stillness and a position of perspective, which I've done, and come to three conclusions, or well, one conclusion of three parts. Firstly, Bravo Child, the performer. I want to create a one-man show, which I'm releasing in September at the Sydney Fringe Festival. The show's title is Surf the Chaos, and it's about how an individual in the modern world can still be intuitive and go with the flow, and how do we make use of these innumerable channels of exchange that are around us, whether it be through nature, or interpersonal, or our self and our mind, or self and the universe, or these happenstance, circumstance, serendipitous collisions of random strangers, or the people power that's always around us, these surpluses and deficits sitting on a bus next to someone who probably has a thing that you need, and we never talk to each other. So that's what Surf the Chaos is about, is randomly generating these things, and also paying tribute to and celebrating the absolute absurdity of the nature of this universe. Like, especially when you go to to quantum physics there's so many odd things really things that bend the mind or break the social norms that we're accustomed to on this human scale when we go right down we inspect it or go right out things get really weird so how can we make use of that randomness that chaos in our daily lives which are so ordered and which we want to have come to an expected or supposed outcome we're so outcomes driven that we get stuck on what should be and neglect what is, and therefore lose the full potential of our worth, and the worth of this amazing melting pot, this cataclysmic collision that is ever expanding and ever changing. We need to be in flux to surf it. That's part one. Part two is Cognitonaut, the explorer of ideas. I think that we can re-envisage how reality can be, because it is such a subjective reality. Our filter really colors and changes exactly what this thing is. I think that the universe is so amazing that it can encompass the entire spectrum of everything. The full array, from the lowest low, the darkest dark, the heaviest heavy, right to the most enlightened spiritual butterfly ascending on the nipple of a polar bear mid-flight in its pirouette as a ballerina of the mind. These things all happen simultaneously. Some people have a really hard time of it, some people have a really light time of it, and we can subjectively try and bring it down to certain privileges and things like that, but I don't think that we, I don't think, well really when it comes down to it, I don't think we're limited to our subjective uh, particle that is I, meaning, I don't think that I experience this just because I am I. I think that I experience it because I have a inclination or a channel into the array at a certain wavelength. I can peer into the wavelength from here or from another person or from out of my body or from being man, woman, baby, child, whatever it is. The fact is that beauty and that reality still exists independent of me. <sighs> what I'm trying to say is I think the universe is all things all the time. And cognito not is a way of shifting our perspective. So if things are shit for you now, that can be better in the future, not because things change, but because you change. And I know that's almost a trite kind of thing. I mean, Gandhi said, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. We know this. We know this. But how do we implement it in our daily lives? And Cognitonaut is a way of sharing innovation in various areas so that we can reimagine the future and step into it knowingly with full intention and as a people who feel empowered to craft their own reality. That's what Cognito Nought's about. It's about the inventors, about those genius visionaries who are, you know, making these gadgets or altering their way of lives or using their own lives as experiments or doing the things we thought were not possible before. Um, I'm excited about the future, what's to come, and I think having hope and looking forward to things is, a, is an elixir of youth.
really. As a kid, you're thinking, when am I going to learn to walk? When am I going to learn to talk? When am I going to be able to ride a bicycle? These sort of things keep us engaged. Then we get to a certain plateau and we think, oh, it's not going to get much better. We start to close down. Our, our channels of reception start to, you know, cement over because we think, I don't need that port. I'll just go to this port. Eat. I need this port. I need this port. You know, we just like focus on a couple of channels. That's boring as hell. I want to be excited. I want to be stimulated. I want to be out of breath on my deathbed. That's the second part. The third part is watermelon fireworks. It's imagination. It's silliness. If cognitive not about the state, Watermelon Fireworks is about the story. It's about the absurdity. It's about the characters and the voices. It's about artificially creating spaces of wonder which can transport the mind or, or shift that perspective. I want you to step into a place that doesn't abide by the rules of society. And I know it does relate to cognitive naught, but I want you to step into a place of wonder. I want you to come to an experiential restaurant. I want your senses to be filled. I want you to lie back in a story. I want you to come to an art hotel where each room has a different reality and a different theme. I want you to have a place of respite, a place, an island of sanity, a place where you can step out and recontextualize your own creativity and express yourself through all of the arts. All of them, because they're all aesthetics. They're all beautiful. They're different dialects of the same language of human beings celebrating this ridiculousness we're a part of in the biggest possible appreciative way and translating it back to each other. Because we have these moments when we are post-human. We are beyond that which we all agree we are. And in those moments, those pupil dilated moments of, oh my God, it's not what we said, we need to then capture those and then filter back through stories or through music or through dance or through movies or through video games or through a conversation in these little symbols that reverberate out of these mouths and get translated back through our uh, intellectual capacity to make them symbols again and patch them together in a cognitive tapestry to go, oh, that's what it was like on the mountain. That's what we're doing for each other. We're going out experiencing post-human moments and then translating it back through art into something that makes sense on the human scale. Like, how do you live that on the daily? How do I implement these amazing tomes of prophetic wisdom if I'm just going to go up to the shops and buy some milk or I'm trying to work out, you know, I've got this ingrown toner, like all the kind of human stuff or even our time span. You know, if things are going so slowly, I mean, a tree might not be significant to me only because it's full song is played out over decades or centuries or maybe the shifting of a mountain or, or maybe on a molecular scale, things have already happened while making this video, which are inconsequential to me only because they happened so quickly and therefore didn't even put a dent in my reality. So human scale is also time-based. Things which move at a similar rate to us are more significant than those which eclipse us or are... Well, didn't even notice your existence. I know this is a bit of a rambling babble, but hopefully it's a little bit of amusing with me of these things I've been thinking while sitting here in this tree, on this bit of land, which is hopefully soaking up through my feet. And these smells, and these tastes, and these ear titillations. All of which are playing me like an instrument. They're coming to me and spurring these songs inside. It's like that this is the artist and I'm the instrument. And the finger on the string or the hand on the paintbrush is like the universe and the elements plucking me. So hopefully you enjoy my song. Three parts, Private Child Performer, Cognitive Not School of Unlearning, and Waterman Fireworks, Spaces of Wonder. Let's make sense of all this absurdity through art.